first, let me say welcome from the Sacred Heart Musical Heritage Association. We're so excited that we're on day three here of our virtual Camp Basala. Yay, yay. Um, and this afternoon or this evening, we have a, a wonderful guest speaker to talk to us about leading. And Helen, for me, Helen is one of the leaders I personally most admire. I love to see her lead and she just controls the class so beautifully. And um, so I think she's the perfect person to do this. She's been teaching leading um, at camp for how long, Helen? Five, oh, well, six uh, years? Seven-ish years, I okay. guess. Okay, I lose track of time, so there yeah, you are. <laughs> But, um, but we are very fortunate to have Helen with us and I'll just turn it over to you, Helen. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I've, I'm really touched by what you just said and, and thank you. Um, I, I think that one of the main things for me is, um, and I always say in my leading classes, what we, me, any of us who are teaching Sacred Heart, all we want you to do is have the best, best possible experience of singing heart at Sacred Heart as you can. And um, when you're leading, to have the best possible experience of standing in the hollow square and hearing your song sung back to you. So um, I'll start by, by saying really that um, I guess leading really is very much a communication with the class. Um, if if you can't communicate what how you would like the class to sing your song, then that needs to be worked upon. One of the main things I think is to build up your own confidence and to um, to learn a song that you want to sing. If you're a very new lead, actually, let, let's just start. How many folks have never led a song at a Sacred Heart singing? I can't really see all of you right now, but um, so just one or two of you. So how many how many folks have um, really felt that you have experienced a good song when you've stood up and led? Or do you think that things that you have done can be improved upon? OK, so that's, that's quite a lot of you. <laughs> I've got you with two hands, up, which is great. Um, so I do hope that I can help you to do that. I'm, I have to say my technical abilities are not great. So I apologize right from the start that if what I'm trying to do doesn't quite come off. I've got some clips of, of uh, singings from uh, Henniger with uh, just to try and get some, some music across so that then you can at least watch me leading and you can uh, you know beat time with me. Um, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work in terms of, you know, time differences and things like that, but but we'll try. If we end up doing this, well, you know, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> but I just hope that, you know, I'll be able to give you some guidance that will help you when we all get back to singings. Won't that be great? Um, it's great to see you all, but I wish you were here with me in, in this room so that we could sing properly together. Um, uh, let's let's just start by one of the things that I always say is is you know we, we talk about the rudiments class which um, Lauren taught on what day is it today Wednesday on, on Monday and um, we have a specific rudiments class but then we have other classes during camp which are classed as something else but in fact every single class is a rudiments class because it's all talking about how we want to behave, how we want to sing sacred heart. So talking of the rudiments, I'd like just to go to the rudiments in our books. I'm assuming you all have your books with you. And there's actually not very much in the rudiments um, about leading, but there are one or two things that I think are quite important to think about when, when you're starting to lead particularly. So, excuse me, my glasses to do this. So on page 16 of the rudiments, um, at section 12, 
ignoring the words in performance because that's something that we are definitely not doing when we stand up to lead a song in Sacred Harp. It's not a performance. We're helping the class to sing. It's a lesson, we're giving a lesson, whether it's a musical or spiritual lesson, but it's in song and we are helping the class to enjoy that experience. So it says, either marks or beats time, hand and arm motions. Singers may also mark time, providing that they follow the leader precisely. I think that's something that, that's quite, um, even if you're not actually leading a song, it's something to bear in mind, because if you're sitting in your seat beating time, that's great. But if you're not looking at the leader, you can lose time with what's going on. So then we end up with a bit of a, a discord in the timing of the class. And that is something that's really, really important is keeping the class together. That's where the front benches of each section, particularly the tenors, come in into their own and do the job that they need to do. I'll, I'll come back to that in a little while. Um, it goes on to say that the first beat of each measure, or a bar if you come from England, is marked with a downward stroke of the hand the downbeat and then up. I'm going to get up and so you can see, well, I hope you'll be able to see more easily in a little while. Um, then it goes on a little bit and it, a little bit further down, it says, although leaders may assume considerable discretion in the manner of marking time, modest downward and upward strokes are much to be preferred to winding, grabbing and snatching methods. Now, I'm going to stand up and hopefully you'll be able to see me a little bit better. So I'm hoping that you can hear, I'll, I'll try and shout because of the, uh, the computer microphone. But what we want are smooth downward and upward movements. And I'm glad that Samuel Summers is here. Thanks, Sam. It's great to see you. Sam talks about his frame of modesty. He brings a, you, you bring a frame with you, don't you? By the way, if anybody wants to speak, please feel free to bash your space bar and say something or put your hand up and we'll, you know. <laughs> but you're all muted right now. So anyway, so Sam talks about the frame of modesty. And that's something that, although I don't use that particular um, technique, my arm is pretty much in what, I know Sam talks about in his frame of modesty. So basically, you want your, your hand to be shoulder to hip. So if you don't want to try it, it may be difficult to be sitting down, but down, up, down, up, down, up. That's great, because you're all in a different time from me. <laughs> okay, but this is what one of the things that, we really need to do is to keep that smooth movement. We don't want any jerking of, or flicking or you know, doing this sort of thing because it, then it's really, really difficult to actually see where the beat is. So everything needs to be nice and smooth and just keep it going. So ideally, I mean, if, if you're not quite in that area, then it doesn't matter, but not too much more than that. If we start doing things like this, then, you know, you don't know where, if, if you're going all the way back, you can't see where the beat is. And if you're doing that, well, apart from the fact that the, you're going to smack the altos in the face, which is not really the great idea, um, you know, it actually, that takes an awful lot more time than just doing that. And that, if you're doing this all the time, will actually slow your song down because it you know the, the class will take note of that longest stroke and so just keep it really nice and smooth sam do you want to say anything at this point i, I would love you to be involved if you want to be you're doing great <laughs> I'm, I'm proud to be here and listen to you that's good well thank you um yeah let's so okay 
grabbing and snatching. I have seen people throw the ball, which is always a good one, <laughs> or grabbing at something in the air and, you know, um, on a, a when you're beating in three, three over, say three over two, three over four, then it's a clear three beat, but it's not a push away and grab back. It's a down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. And you'll find that that actually becomes much easier for you because it's a smoother movement. Instead of doing, you know, the, the pushing and the and the winding and, and all sorts of things. I'm sure you guys have all seen people leading very strangely and perhaps you can't see where the beat is. Um, if you keep it nice and smooth, then that, that really is the best thing to do. Um, talking about um, beating time, again, you know, one of the things I will say, because I have been asked about it by someone who I'm not sure is here, I've been asked about beating time, beating in four. With the red book, which is what we're specifically talking about in this tradition, we don't beat in four. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, um, but in our tradition, we beat one, two, one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three. Any questions? Feel free to shout. Bonnie. Smash your um, space bar. I was just practicing. Okay. <laughs> I know, I was doing the three beats. That's the <laughs> one I always find difficult. Okay. It's interesting because a lot of, a lot of people who start singing will often start to, to by singing a song that is, is led in three. And actually that's probably the more difficult. Um, as you just said, um, it's much easier just to do a down and up than it is to do the one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so in Sacred Heart, there are seven modes of time. So we have two over two, two over four, and four over four, all of which are, you beat time as one, two, one, two, or one, two, one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? There are two modes of time, two modes of triple time. So you have three over four and three over two. So the three that we've talked about, one, two, three and the three over four no actually let me, let me put it another way How, what it says in the rudiments is that three over two or four over or two over, what i can't remember how to anyway three over two is slower than three over four or put that to the other the other time signatures too so it's, it's interesting in the fact that it's worded like that. So it, is, it refers to the fact of it not being a faster than. And I think that's something that perhaps um, a lot of folks have got into, a, a, in my opinion, perhaps a bit of a bad habit in leading things too fast. Um, I personally prefer a more modest pace, um, but that's me. And, and I would say there are, Lots of ways to do things right, but there are things that are what I would call um, true practices. Um, that's not quite the, the phrase I want, but I, I think you know what I mean. You know, sort of good practices, so that we do things that enable the class to stay together, to sing together, to have full communion together, and that I think is probably the most important part of standing up to sing a song. So let's let's um, if I can work with technology, <laughs> I'm going to play a song, which is in 
Should there I there are a couple of questions. Could, could okay. we ask them? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, my question is, you, you seem to be leading with your palm uh, facing the tenors as opposed to having it perpendicular to the tenors. Does, is, does that much matter? No. No. As long as you're comfortable with the way that you, you lead and it's, it's smooth and it's clear as to what you're doing, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, and, and to be fair, my hand probably changes throughout a song. You know, and you know, and you will see some people leading, and they'll start with the hand down, and then that they turn it as they're coming up. Entirely up to you. As long as the beat is clear, then that's fine. Anybody I have else? a question? Sure. Hi, Laura. <clears throat> Hi. I'm new, relatively new to uh, Sacred Harp, and uh, you know, I would have thought that in a beating three four, that you would still keep the down, and then you'd go up, and then the th the new uh, gesture would be on the third beat, but I noticed you used the the new uh, gesture for the third. You you did that first. Is that yeah. uh, does it matter or is that the way to do it? That is the way to do it. It's you could do it the way you've just described, but the general way that we sing in sacred harp and beat in three in triple time is down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay. Anybody else before we try and sing this song? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try. You may lose me momentarily. I will be back. And I'm going to hold that for just a minute. Right, it's on page 84 if you want to open your books. And we'll all beat time together. And unfortunately, because I've got to hit the play and then stand back, you might um, we might miss the start of, of the song, but let's let's just go for this and see how it works. Okay, did that help in terms of, that was a, a two over four song, so we're talking sort of March time. Um, a two Can over I two ask, because I, I, Helen, you were like off a little bit from the sound, like you're me seeing you, and oh, I'm okay. curious if, if other people found that, but then at the end it seemed to match up. 
Oh. So it seemed like maybe the, the, the video and the audio were coming through at different. Okay, we get it. Oh, okay. Speeds, but that's okay. And and I think we can tell when it is off because your mouth isn't, it's like bad dubbing, you know? Um, but at the end, it seemed to work. So I'm curious what other people saw. It might depend on people's connections. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't have any problem. No problems here. Awesome. Okay. Just my right. crappy internet. I'm happy to hear that. But actually, that's that's a really good point, Lauren, Lauren. because that's one of the things that um, you know, talking about the responsibility of the front benches. If you're not a particularly confident leader, then the front bench tenors in particular are there to do a job and to help you. So if you're not particularly confident in how your arm moves, then the front benchers will be watching your mouth to see what you're doing. So if your arm's not quite doing what, you know, what, the, what your mouth's doing, then they'll be watching your mouth like a hawk so that hopefully, you know, that they'll be able to keep in time. Talking of, of the job that they're doing, when you're leading, it's important to make sure that you, you haven't got your hand like this because anybody sort of to the side and behind you won't actually be able to see what you're doing. So if you can, try and have your arm out to the side a little bit so that people around can see. But also, again, the responsibility of the front benches, particularly the tenors who are watching you, watching your arm, watching your mouth, making eye contact. Eye contact with the front bench is really, really important, particularly when you're starting a song. If you haven't indicated whether or not you want to, get, to sing a repeat, you need to make sure that you are communicating with the front bench at least to make sure that they know that you're going to want to do a repeat. Um, as I say, particularly important as you're starting a song. Um, and what, what we do is something that we call a, a preparatory gesture. Um, where, well, when I'm leading a song, I'll, I'll make eye contact with somebody on the front bench. Doesn't matter who it is, it could be somebody you know, perhaps the person who's keying the session. Um, but just make, make sure you have eye contact and give a little gesture when you're ready. So you always start with your hand up. And no matter, we'll, we'll come on in a little, little bit to, to what things you need to look at before you actually start to think about what you're going to lead. But always start with your hand up. So even if the song starts on a rest, so if there's not music in the whole measure, we always start with your hand up and you beat that rest and sing, assuming that's where it, it comes. Um, so the gesture that I always give, as I say, make eye contact. It's, it's almost imperceptible, but it's like a, a raising of the eyebrow or a breath in or something that just makes the front bench know that you're about that you're ready and you're about to start because you know they're not going to know otherwise. Any questions? Helen, one, question. one of the questions you may get to in just a second uh, with that was that uh, what happens when you have an upbeat? Uh, when you start an upbeat, that was just one of the in the chat. I'd let you know. Okay, thank you. Um, Helen? Yeah. Uh, I had a question and then. Uh, I can't see who it is. Who's that? Uh, Michael. Hi, Michael. I think uh, I. Uh, uh, in transitioning to a second verse or a third verse, uh, uh -huh. what do you do? I was actually watching you and thought you were going to end on that first verse. So I just thought I'd ask you about that. Okay. Uh, when we were singing 84, you mean? This one just now. Okay. Um, I, will, I always make it clear that I'm stopping at the end of a verse. But it's clear because particularly if you're singing um, a fugue song where um, you're going to be, you know, if you, and if you're going to do a repeat, because if, you, if you're doing two verses of a song with a, a fugue entry and you don't make it clear and you keep going, then, you know, you may get the basses come in with their part, or if, if it's a, a, a plain song, you may just get people carry on. So it, I, 
that to me, it's always really important to make it clear that you're stopping at the end of that first verse and then you start again. Is, okay, is that what you. you meant? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Let's, um, again, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see if we can do this. I'm going to try and, and play another, uh, another song. It's on page 155, Northfield. One of what I refer to as a classic fugue. Um, just before we do that, I want to talk about what, what the objectives of singing a song are and what are the things that you need to look out for before you get up into the square to lead a song. Um, so I'm going to throw that open and come back at me with some, some points. Anybody? Yeah. Can you space for it for me? Here's Scott. Hey, um, what? Yeah. Scott, um, the bad leader. So one thing that, that's good to look for is if there are any repeats, mandatory or otherwise. Absolutely. Um, so I'll just say that and let other people chime in. With okay, thank you. For repeats, because. You could say how many, in which verses you're going to sing. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Worry Anybody about else? changes in time signature? Yeah, sure. The mode of time it, and have an idea how how what speed you want before the leader, before the front bench takes it from you. Absolutely. That that's a really, really good point, Sam. Thank you. Yeah. I think one thing it, that that sorry, Helen. No, no, go on, Joe. I think one thing that that applies both to everything that you do as a leader and in terms of what you are mindful of when you're choosing a song is no surprises. No surprises to you as a leader and also is, you know, you know as we've been talking about your job, your role as the leader of that song in terms of how you interact with the class and the decisions that you make before or while you're leading, no surprises. I think that I'm just going to pick up on, on that just slightly. It's perhaps something to think about much later when you are much more confident leaders. I'm not suggesting that any of you are not, but, um, you know, but a consideration for the class. If you've only got a very small or not very strong class, then be considerate about the sorts of things that you choose to lead. Um, for instance, if you've got a very weak base class, you wouldn't sing 542 because they've got that great bass entry that's just going to fall apart. So it's the, there are those sorts of things to consider too. But I'm, right now, I'm, I'm sort of talking more about when you're first starting to lead, what are the things that you want to think about? So we've all, already sort of touched on a few. One of those Jonathan just mentioned about what happens if, if you're starting a song where the first beat is a rest. Well, we, we just sort of talked about that always start with the downbeat and apart from that anything else the front bench then know exactly where you are so start with the downbeat and sing okay um, one Anybody thing else? that i've that i've noticed i'm really new at least okay. and in the group that i attend most often uh, one thing they always comment on is whether rests are going to be observed or not and if so which ones are you talking about rests at the beginning of the song uh no no bird's oh. eyes i'm talking about oh bird's eyes okay yeah yeah so so are you saying that they don't generally observe the bird's eyes or sometimes they do sometimes they don't sometimes they do and sometimes they don't that's really not helpful <laughs> Well, I um, think it's on, on some songs, they always observe them, and on other songs, they don't observe them. Okay, well, as long as they make it clear, or, or the leader makes it clear um, as to whether or not they, are, they do intend to observe the bird's eyes, then that's not so much of a problem. If they don't make it clear, and then the, the song falls apart, then they won't be too happy about it. It doesn't give them a great experience, neither does it give the class a great experience. So I would suggest that um, possibly 
you know, that they need, and, and also if you go to sing somewhere else, I mean, you're talking about presumably your local singing, if you go to sing somewhere else and you do, you you know, you, you guys might be used to doing it that way, but you go somewhere else and unless it's clear, then, you know, you might not have the greatest experience. Well, our leaders are usually, they're clear, they're clear. So okay. It, okay. it's not usually a problem. Okay. Yeah. Helen, I have a question. One other. Oh, um, as speaking as a participant, uh, especially at larger singings, it's really helpful if the leader waits till most people have the correct page. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, and, and so I personally, when I lead, which I don't especially like to do, well, I'll say 155 Northfield. I mean, building redundancy. Anyone who's ever taught knows to do that, but I know that's not the tradition. But, uh, but the most important thing is not just start singing the song when a big proportion of the people are still finding the page, because that makes it extremely difficult for newcomers. Thank you. Absolutely, I agree. And, and I think, I, personally, I don't advocate calling the name of the song just the number, but that's, that's me. Uh, and I know a lot of folks who feel the same. Um, it's, not, it's not wrong. It's just, you know, not what I was taught to do. Um, and one of the things that I, I would say about that is when particularly, I mean, you mentioned the big singing. So if you're at a big singing convention, then the likelihood is that there are lots of people who they're going to want to lead. So the idea that you call your number as you're coming into the square is good. But the front benches will, should, I will say, be cognizant of how of where the class is and whether people are ready. I have to say, when when I'm keying a session, if I'm and I'm on front bench tenor, I will look round to make sure that people are not still flicking through the book. So so again, that's that's a responsibility of the front bench too. Um, Helen, this is oh, sorry, Helen. Helen, Helen, this is Lena. Um, uh, when Hi. I first started. Hi, when I first started leading, something that really tripped me up was what do I, you know, what do I do between the first and second verse with my hand? You know, do I, do I keep it up? Do I stop a little bit? Do I, you know, and that's, that's the one thing that tripped me up because I worked so hard on the, you know, the repeats, but I forgot about, there's an extra added thing there between the first and, ne and next verse. And, you know, that, that was one thing that made me a little nervous is like, what do I do with my hand there? Okay, well, I don't know whether you've only just joined us, Lena, but we, we have touched on that a little bit. But let's let's sing this next song and then hopefully you'll be able to see what I, I do in that. <laughs> if I can work this machine again, bear with me, please. Did that help, Lena? Um, yes, I, I, I'm 
that that's good. I, I was just um, pretty much saying it for beginners um, who hadn't really stood up in the circle yet, just warning them that there is that between the first and second measure, like, what do you do? So, but yeah, that's, that's good to see that um, you're clearly holding the hand up. <laughs> well, it, it, to me, it's important because I don't want people to think I'm going to carry on and sing a repeat, unless right. I, if I want to sing a repeat, I will turn right. to the basses and get them to come in, obviously. Right. But it, it needs to be clear that you're finishing that verse before moving on. Helen, this is Great. Sam. And between verses, um, sometimes, especially if it's a song like Amazing Grace that starts on the upbeat, mm -hmm. it's it's really easy for the lead, and it's 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 the leader may well uh, just keep keep marking time, and then they observe the rest in the appropriate time and keep going, and there's not any pause between verses. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that there, you do want to pause between verses, and your hand just sort of like stays up where people can see it. Yeah. But um, if, if you sort of don't want that break, something I've found useful is on the last measure, say, if you've got a song like Northfield, the second ending that we would take possibly on the notes or whenever we take it, if you do mm -hmm. a beat, it's just it's you, shorter. You mark it a little, but you don't do a big yeah. mark because if you mark it full, um, it will look like you want to repeat. But yeah. if you mark it small, the class won't think that it's a repeat. Absolutely. But, but the time will keep going. Yeah. Time marches on. Yeah, I agree. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you may be getting to this, so I may be jumping ahead, but it, in a song with a similar structure to Northfield, but where there's a, a, a rest at the beginning. Uh huh. So when you go to the second verse, do you still do that little mini hold and then start in with the yeah. rest? Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. it feels like with some songs, and I can't think of which ones, you're beating a lot of rest <laughs> and not get, you know, it just feels like there's but a lot of silence. And, I, I, I can't think but, of a, a song off the top of my head right now, but um, but if, if you, you you stop the, the um, at the end of the first verse, a, a very short stop here, and then you beat that first beat and you're in. So you don't actually, I wouldn't say you don't lose time, but it's, it's within the time frame. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a, an observation about verses, um, and that is, uh, I I find it very helpful when the leader puts up a finger for first, second, third. Um, personally, I do that for two reasons, and one is sometimes I get so carried away with the song I forget what I announced. And that's embarrassing. Uh, but the other, the other reason is sometimes I'm leading a song, I call a song, which is a bit ambitious for myself as a leader, or maybe for the class at that time of day. And if it starts to crash and burn, or short of that, but it just seems like why beat it to death? And so I can call it at one verse and, and finish it and not put everyone through additional verses of agony. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. It's, it, you know, if, if you say, you know, at the start, I'm going to leave verses one, two, repeat on two. And as you say, if it doesn't go very well and you think, oh, I, you know, I've, I've, I've said I'm going to do that now, then you sort of feel pretty much obliged to do that for the class. But, um, and I, I, I do exactly the same as you. Um, I, you know, will usually hold, again, to be fair, if you're at a big singing, um, you know, and lots of people to get to lead, then, you know, perhaps you only ought to be singing one verse anyway. I'm not suggesting everybody has to do that, but it, again, it, that's the consideration for the class. And also, um, you, you mentioned about, you know, a, a song not being necessarily appropriate or right for the time of day. If, say, you were wanting to lead something, well, let's start from, if, if you're a really new leader, and perhaps you only have a couple of songs in your repertoire that you know that you can lead happily and feel confident in doing, go speak to the arranging committee. Say to them, you know, I'm, I'm a new leader. I've only got a couple of songs that I can lead. Would you please be able to put me in early? And they will do that. And then you don't have to worry that you're not going to be called until right at the end of the day and your two songs have gone. Um, so that's really something to consider. Um, 
Alternatively to that, if, you, if you're if you very confident and you want to lead an anthem, um, we won't say anything about that. But again, go and speak to the arranging committee and um, you know say to them, I, you know, I really like to lead an anthem and they will put you in at an appropriate spot. So there, there are lots of things to consider. Peter. I have a question. Um, since you mentioned songs near the end of the scene, could you talk a little about what type of songs are best for the beginning of the singing and for the end of the singing? Well, that will, that will vary depending on the class that you have at the time. Um, if you've got a really big convention where you've got lots of strong singers and there's lots of energy still left at the end of the day, then I mean, I definitely would not advocate anthems at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, you, you can still lead fuguing songs, songs with, with drive. Um, it, you know, it, it doesn't have to start to slow down just because it's the end of the day. But um, that, again, is something that um, the arranging committee will take into in consideration if they know the people that they have in the class in terms of who they might call to lead. But also the responsibility is on you as well. Um, and, and just, you know, if you can get a feel of how the class is, if you feel like the, the energy is waning, then go for something that's a little bit slower to, to just start to wind down. Does that help? Certainly at the start of the day, um, you know, don't start with any fast fugues. Um, you know, gradually build things up so that you, you're going throughout the day and, you know, not everybody. There have been times when I've known a convention to go off like a rocket and that first session, you have a load of fuging songs and by the by lunchtime, they've all gone. So, you know, those are the sorts of things that you need to consider. Ellen. Yeah. I wanted to add one thing, if I may. Yeah, um, sure. I thought about saying it towards the end of the our, our session, but I'll just go ahead and throw it out. And this is for mainly for the newer folks. I, and I'm so glad to see so many unfamiliar names and faces, by the way. Thank you for joining us. Um, my first year or two going to camp, uh, you know, I was terrified to get up and lead because I thought Shelby was going to come speak to me afterwards because of something that I did. And if you don't know who Shelby Shepard is, you'll see her in our videos from YouTube that we'll post uh, later. Um, but I found it really helpful to, and of course, I was doing this in person at the time, and it's not as easy to do that right now, um, but to watch uh, respected leaders uh, those of you who are new, just peruse YouTube um, and look at videos and when you have questions about those really specific things, those little um, kind of in-between things that you're not sure what happens when, just watch them and kind of see what they do. And it, I found that helpful to kind of guide me, um, you know, because I, I, was a, I was a bit afraid. So that's yeah, a good, good tactic. And, and I, I think that, that um, sort of reminds me of something that I had thought about saying, actually, I, I was very lucky in that I, one of my main mentors was Buell Cobb. And when I, I really sort of cut my teeth on Sacred Harp in, at the National Convention in Birmingham. And Buell was so kind and uh, he, would, <laughs> he, would, he was the chairman of the convention at that time and was, was really, really busy. It was a big, big convention back then. Um, and he would suddenly appear at my shoulder and say, watch this next leader, watch this next leader. And so, yeah, absolutely, Jonathan, that is a really, really important thing to do. You know, you may be a newer singer and you probably don't know the songs. And so, you know, you've got your head in your book. Just sometimes take your head out of the book and just sit and listen and watch. Um, and you will pick up lots of, of really good things and, you know, and, um, you know, and we can we can all tell you about, you know, people who are good to watch. Um, there's Judy Cordell. I love to watch. She's she's so graceful. Um, and as a lifelong singer, I will tell you that Judy will will tell you herself. She gets up to lead and she is nervous and you'll watch her leading and her hands going like this. So, you know, don't worry that, you know, you, you might be nervous and the whole class is there to help you and to give you that really good experience. So, you know, and uh, yeah. Hello, it's Donna. Hi, Donna. Um, do you feel like you touched on when there's a, a okay. My very first uh, camp was real mm -hmm. small, but I he assigned me 
a song to be ready to lead um, at the end of the day um, with the three two three two time signature. Okay. And so when I, so my question for you is like, do you feel like you've answered or touched on the when there's a rest at the beginning? Because like with a three with a three two or three four, I don't know about if there's a three four with a rest at the beginning, but my song he assigned to me was 49 on the bottom. And when when I when I went when I went down for the lap for the last um, you know, at the end of the song and yeah. I, we were we were leading we were supposed to lead two of uh, uh pick out two verses okay. so i said you know like one and three right so i'm done with one and i come up hold my hand before i started in you know with with the time to start the thir uh, third verse yeah. but everybody else started talking uh, singing when i brought my hand up which technically was not accurate because I had to uh, um, observe the rest. So my instructor said, you know, like it, I wasn't ready to sing. I wasn't singing with them. I'm standing there so confused. And okay. he, he said, um, Donna's right. She stopped, she, you know, she stopped and brought her, brought her hand up, ready for you all to look that, you know, it's gonna be now sing. And they all started singing the minute I brought my hand up. So 49 on the bottom is Mia. If, if you want, if people want to just flip to it very quickly. So I'm literally just going to be the last measure, thinking right. it's the end of the of the last of the first verse to go into verse three, right? Yeah. Okay, so. There's the slightest, slightest stop. It's, it's almost imperceptible, but it's there. It's an end right. of the verse. It, was that, could you see that, guys? I mean, I, I, I don't know whether because you Because you weren't making any sound, Zoom cut to someone else. I couldn't actually see you okay. do it. So if you could sing while you do it, then Zoom will keep on <clears> you. Yeah. Um, So I'm doing a shorter beat. Did you see that? Right. So but when I came up with my heat. Right. Did I did I did that. What I'm saying was the class started singing it didn't matter my small uh, my jerk my hand may have been not quite as you, you just need to shorten your beat. So i went down about the, halfway the and then measure. i came back up yeah i went out about halfway and then i came yeah. up and they all started with verse three so okay. my, my question would at be the end of uh, the end of that previous verse, just shorten your beats. We, we talked about this earlier as well. Right, that's shorten what I mean. But, but my question, Helen, make is- Make it clear that you're, you're beating the rests for the next- My next question verse. is though, when you are at a singing and everybody doesn't recognize what you've done and they start singing as soon as your hand is, is like up there thinking that's the, uh, that how do you, how do you tell the class no you know do, you, do i well do you just keep going with the just the, the front bench should have been watching what, what you were doing had you had you announced the verses yes okay so it's not like there's a repeat so if if you had done that then the front bench should have been with you and watching what you were doing so they should have been there knowing that they were going from the first verse into the third there shouldn't have been any issue at that point, what I would do is walk into the tenors and sing in front of them. Oh, so okay. lead with your voice and tell them what you want. Now that takes a lot of confidence and a lot of um, <laughs> a lot yeah. of yeah. Look what you're talking to. <laughs> a lot of wit. But you know, if um, 
if you don't feel confident in doing that, then, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Anybody else? Okay, any just idea? asking. Just, I just was asking. Helen, I have found yeah. that that does happen fairly often. This is Marika. Um, and yeah, while you can sort of make an issue of it by walking into the tenors, to avoid it, I have found that as you're getting into position between the two verses, I kind of make a circular motion to indicate that I'm not actually beating time there, but I'm just getting my hand into position. Okay. Particularly, particularly if, if you start on a third beat of a three quarter or something like that. I don't know if that's kosher, but I found it it does work and avoids confrontation. Yeah, I, I, it's not something I would advocate for you to do personally. Um, that that smacks to me of, of folk singing and, you know, we're going to do a repeat here. Um, but um, if that's, I guess, if that's the way that you, I, I don't quite understand how that would make it clear that you were going into the next verse. I mean, that, if you've already announced that you're going into the next verse, then, you know, it's, I, I'm not quite sure how that works, but, but if it works for you, then, you know, I guess. I, I think it depends on the group, uh, you know, and a, a, a well-experienced group you find. I found that it's a problem mostly where you've got a very large group, some of whom are very experienced singers and a whole bunch of whom are new. Okay. And so it kind of gets all off, yeah. Okay. Well, then the experienced singers should know better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Helen, I well, noticed Helen. you also used your book a little bit in that as it was Leading. sort of pausing the time, right? And then you leaned in with your book in your hand. Yeah, that, I, I, I guess... Um, I have to be honest, sometimes I'm not aware of what I do. So um, it sort of comes naturally. And I guess I'm uh, perhaps I'm lucky, perhaps I don't know. Um, but I had some great teachers. And um, so I, th I think, it, again, it goes back to that communication with the class. As long as the class can see exactly what you want them to do, then, you know, if it's if you use your hand or your book a little bit, um, then, you know, as long as it's clear, I think I think that's fine. Helen, I have a question. Sometimes, uh, especially on fuguing songs, I see leaders uh, walk around the hollow square instead of standing in front of the tenors. I personally like that a lot. Um, I wonder if, if you have opinions on that. I, not specifically. If if it's something that you like to do, you know, so that you get a different sort of sound as you walk around. I I. I don't really do that myself. I, I, obviously, I turn to the parts and I bring the parts in, um, which actually brings me on to something, that, something specifically that Connie had asked me, thinking she wasn't going to be able to be here, um, about how you turn to the parts to bring them in. Now, you already saw how I did Northfield, which was a um, bass, tenor, alto, treble lead into in the fugue. Um, if you've got... A, a bass, tenor, treble alto. Um, yeah, I don't know whether Connie's still here because I can't see everybody on there. But um, so I would do bass, tenor, treble, alto. So that you're not uh, the the way that came about. I think is so that you don't actually turn your back on the on the tenors because I know some people would literally do uh, that. I prefer to open out into the square. Um, thank you, Sam. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of, in fact, I, I'm, somebody tell me, I, I'm a, I think that's how the Densons used to teach how to, to uh, bring the, the altos in. Um, just a, a funny story, talk, um, Jonathan mentioned Shelby Shepherd. I remember, um, being in a, a, a class when she was sitting on the front bench of the trebles. And um, I'd not been singing all that long. And I was lead, I was singing, I think I was singing 556, which was one of her and Jeff's favorite songs. And I remember I was having a great time. It sounded fabulous. And we came to the fugue and I bass, tenor, and turn to the trebles. Well, it's the altos that come in next. 
And Shelby just raised her eyebrows and went, <laughs> just to let me know that that wasn't quite right. I never did it again. <laughs> so, so those sorts of things, you know, you might feel a little bit embarrassed if somebody does that. It's to help you, you know, but take it as, as a, a thing of, of we're doing this out of love for you. We're not telling you that you've done it wrong. We're just helping you to try and make it a little bit better for yourselves. So, um, you know, and we don't want to make fun of anybody. Um, I was gonna ask Scotty, the very bad leader, to give, give us a few pointers about some of the things that he quite often does. Where is he? There he is. Well, as for, um, for several years, uh, my alter ego, uh, Scotty, the bad leader, has come to camp and particularly at the youth camp. And I, I would say that the, the way that Scotty the Bad Leader came about is because um, Scott DePoy, the beginning leader, made probably every mistake, had every question, had every possible thing that could go wrong in a leading session at a Sacred Harp convention, go wrong because I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And so I collected um, really primarily my mistakes and some things that I had seen, and I took it to youth camp. Um, and uh, Scotty, the bad leader, learned a lot from the kids, because every time I would lead a song, they would tell me things that I could do that could have been better. And I, I, had, I had one girl, she was seven. She had three pages of notes, Scotty the Bad Leader, three pages, Cora, um, single space. So, um, I, you know, for me, um, for Scotty the Bad Leader and, and Scotty D, um, I've, coming to these classes has been enormously beneficial, as has, as Jonathan said and Helen, um, just watching really good leaders. Mm -hmm watching them do, you know, and if you, and if you can find a really good leader leading a song that you want to lead, so much the better, because I, I just find in, in whatever thing that I'm doing, whether it's like, I listen to musicians that I want to, that play like I want to play. I watch actors that act like I want to act. So I watch leaders that lead like I want to lead. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to sort of pick up on, on, on Scott's <laughs> bad leading. Um, just to say a couple of things about, um, about etiquette, really. Um, it, uh, you're, in the uh, YouTube clips that you'll be able to see after the class um, or beyond, you'll see Buell Cobb talking about etiquette. And um, one of the things that I would say is, uh, particularly if you're sitting on the front bench, you, you don't necessarily have time to adjust your clothing when you get up to, to sing a song if you've been called when you, you're there. So um, try and, and surreptitiously, as your name's called as the next leader, you know, if you can, without causing disruption, get out of your seat and go stand at one of the corners and just make sure that you're all nice and neat before you get up, because those altos will rip you to shed, shreds if you've got, you know, <laughs> horrible things. Um, and um, so that's just one thing. Um, and um, again, just re reiterating that being mindful of the class. And um, it, one thing that I, I didn't say, again, just going back to, to those of you who are newer leaders, um, we advocate and we would rather that you learned the tenor line and sang tenor when you lead. Now, if you really can't do that, then, all we want you to do is to participate and have a great time and you know really engage with the class if you really really feel that you can't sing tenor then when you come up to the square just whether to the person who's keying or someone on that front bench tenor just say to them i'm going to sing treble or i'm going to sing alto or whatever at that point i would suggest that assuming you're an alto singer when you're standing in the square, instead of standing directly in front of the tenors, just step back a bit so that you're a little bit nearer to the altos. If you're singing a fuguing tune, 
and you bring in the basses and you're going to bring in the tenors, then at least learn those few bars where there's only the tenors singing before you sing with the altos. So that at least the whole point of you singing tenor is that you're singing with that front bench who you're facing. So if you're not singing tenor, there's, there's a discount, discord there straight away almost. So just make that clear and just be mindful of that with the front benches, because again, that's something else that as front benches, if we're watching your mouth and you're not doing the same as we're doing, then that can be quite off-putting, which also brings me on to something else. Some new singers I have encountered who will come and stand in the square to lead a song, and that's fantastic. But if they don't know the notes, they will stand and not sing at all. That's really, really off-putting. <laughs> um, it's, it's sort of, you, you sort of don't quite know where you are because you're not seeing the mouth move, you're not seeing the arms move, sometimes not in the right way. So again, bear that in mind. Even if you're only opening and shutting your mouth in the right place uh, and you know singing the words rather than the notes, then at least that helps. Um, I hope that didn't sound really horrible, but I just wanted to make a point because it really is important for the front bench to do their job, to be able to see what you're doing, to be able to help you and to be able to help the, the rest of the class. Any more questions? Well, we're, we're about out of time. I think one thing that I, I would like to do, um, perhaps to finish, is, is to play another song. Um, and I want to just make you aware, it's, it's on page 472, Aiken. And um, one of the things that I find a lot of people don't do on this song, and another one that that's, has a similar ending is 192, um, beating out the last bar. It's one of my pet peeves, <laughs> along with several. Um, but so I'm gonna play the song and beat it out and and um do the same and um and then if there's any more questions then i'm happy to to hang around for a little while if you want to um other than that i would like to say a real thank you for coming and joining us today i hope it's been educational instructional enjoyable um and what i would really love to do is to see you all at camp next year let's hope let's hope um, or at a singing somewhere. And, um, uh, you know, what we all want to do is get back into that hollow square and sing together. And won't that be wonderful when we do? But, okay, so if I can do the technology again, here we go. What page number are we on? 472. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, bear with me. I think this should be it.
I obviously didn't listen long enough to that recording before I, I did it. I didn't realise though, I don't know, three peat. <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody. Uh, hope to see you somewhere. Thank you so much, Helen. Yay. A reminder, everybody, don't forget that tomorrow is just videos and those will be released at 10 o'clock. So Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, you'll have all videos. And then Friday begins at a new time, seven o'clock for ID's craft class, Eastern, Eastern time, and eight o'clock for Nicholas's cooking school. So y'all be sure to come. So good to see everybody, Helen. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you, Susan. Good to see you too. Okay. Thank you, Helen. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for your help, Jonathan. Have a good Christmas. <laughs> hey, I want to know where my Christmas card is. Uh, yeah, I, I saw a Facebook reminder today, so I got to get one to you next week. <laughs> if anyone has any questions before we start switching off, then um, shout now or forever hold your peace. Thank you, Helen. It was great. It was Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Um, good to see you. I, I just wanted to make an observation, if I may. Sure. Just, um, when, when you said about... Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, when you, you mentioned about uh, uh, people, um, singers co correcting, correcting when you, you make a little mistake in a lead. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I found that if I seek those singers out and thank them for it afterwards, it's often the start of a beautiful friendship. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and I think that's, that's something to really cultivate because, you know, sometimes it's perhaps people who you wouldn't necessarily chat to when yeah. you know um and uh, again uh, you know I, I can't reiterate enough that all that we and it's not a correction it's just a helping as i've said before Absolutely. but it's yeah. you know it's it's all done with love yeah it is yeah thank you Ellen. okay thanks oh. all right i'm gonna sign us all off everybody we'll okay. see you Okay. Okay. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Bye. 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 Thank you everyone for coming. Yep. Enjoy that video tonight. Yeah, enjoy the video. Jonathan put yeah, the link enjoy in the there. Video. Go okay. back to that playlist link if you've already watched videos on the playlist. Go to our channel. You'll, 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 you'll see Shelby Shepherd doing some of her boot camp leading class too. Um, so it so be good. Okay. Uh, enjoy. I hope to see you all singing somewhere. Heidi, hi. <laughs> I feel bad, but I'm going to do it. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.